It may be that our greatest gift in life is that we're always one decision away. From transformation we're always one decision away from a new path with new experiences new beliefs new identity one decision away from a totally different life it's almost incomprehensible that all the days leading up to now everything we knew ourselves to be can be discarded and left with one swing of an axe gone what is more miraculous than that we live at the intersection of two imaginary worlds right the past and the future past is gone and essentially meaningless yet is the provider of our Identity it still rules over us our sense of who we are comes from our collection of past memories that imaginary world of yesterday like the elephant tied to the chair with a rope it hasn't realized it's strong enough to break free it doesn't know that what confines him is not the rope but acceptance of a lie and that's what the past that's what identity is a lie we are not yesterday we are right now and from the trivial things to the significant things we get wrapped up in that lie we overlook the gift of control we have over our future what does it mean to say I'm not a morning person that in your past you hadn't conditioned yourself to wake up early. Okay what does it mean to say oh I let people walk all over me that in your past you didn't stand up for yourself what does it mean to say I'm awkward or shy or I struggle with writing or running or public speaking so maybe you did but what does it have to do with right now what does that have to do with realizing the control you have over your life because simply realizing you can disconnect from these narratives that they are not you is a superpower realizing that calling yourself a bad student because you failed a test it's like never taking off your raincoat because it rained yesterday it's like no the sun is out at adt then once you realize right now is the beginning of the rest of your life you can start making little changes identify not who you were but who you'd love to be and move towards it read the power of habit and atomic habit so you can understand change isn't crazy or big or scary it's moving little things in your life around so that they work for you not against you start waking up and thinking about not what has happened but what can happen not what can go wrong but what can go right you are always one decision away from a totally different life because you're always one decision away from change from walking away from the narratives that you have accepted and so remember that but remember it not just when things are fine remember it when you're struggling when you feel restless or uneasy unsure uninspired sad angry not content with the reflection in the mirror when you feel that negativity you're not looking at what can be you're looking at what you have been and there's no room at the table for that distraction not when you can reach out and start building something new not when you can put on a new pair of shoes and walk down a different path you are always one decision away from a totally different life and that decision should be first and foremost to choose future over past your next step over the last one choose your ideal world and start redefining goals building george Eliot has said it's never too late to be with what you might have been this is a message that i 100 percent stand behind i will always believe that to be true why because you always have the now to start moving in that direction and a skeptic or someone playing devil's advocate could say yeah well you know not me write the timeline for me has expired or i missed the age requirement maybe life circumstances have made plan a impossible it is quite literally too late okay but here's what i believe we frequently misunderstand in this department i think we misidentify what it is we really want and sure that sounds presumptuous for me to sit here and imply that maybe uh, you missed the mark right how would i ever know what you want will hear me out cause i think too often we confuse the vehicle for the destination that thing we thought we wanted in actuality wasn't really what mattered to us we wanted where it would bring us we wanted how it would make us feel we wanted what we'd become when we engaged in that thing that thing was simply the ride to the destination not the destination itself and that's incredible news because vehicles are interchangeable it's always possible to find a new route or new ride to the show and this is why self-reflection is so important because it's easy to get so caught up in the vehicle that we forget where we're going you know for example i get a ton of, of inquiries about keynote speaking and that's fantastic i think it's really cool that people want to do that and see me as someone to help guide them but when i hear that question i can't help it my first thought is always okay but why keynote speaking and it's not personal why should always be the first question we ask is that truly the destination do you feel in your soul you have a story to tell do you get a high from the audience interaction is it how you feel you can best serve the community like what is it for you or maybe it was more of an arbitrary decision you know where what you're looking for is you know generating impact adding value to others maybe it's some type of financial incentive right all these things are valid and they could all come from speaking my point here is not to tell you what you should or shouldn't be pursuing as your goal my point is that we need to understand why because when we get to the core of what we really want the best path to get there often looks way different than we thought it might i use this example often but perfectly relevant right there was a point in time where i used to think songwriting was it for me right my heart my plan until i realized pretty quickly that i could live without it and that surprised me i wasn't quite sure what to make of 
That but that what really made me sad to let go of was the storytelling piece the expression observing and philosophizing about life and that when I took that emotive storytelling I could bend it and reshape it a million different ways that I actually loved the freedom of being able to express myself or make a point without being totally bound by rhyme scheme and in rhythms. I found that point where I could help others in their difficult times maybe see things from a new angle by helping them to look at the world differently right the vehicle in a way was almost expendable and that was a giant epiphany for me you know songwriting was not what I wanted it was bringing me closer to what I truly wanted that helps me reshape my plans my approach my strategy and hey maybe you're different maybe you are right on the money maybe you've thought this through and things couldn't be clear but hey people tend to speak from their experiences and you know that awareness to me was no small accomplishment getting there and understanding that right if if that 1000 foot view does anything it exposes how multidimensional the playing field is and how our proclivity is is always to box ourselves in smaller 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 often leading us to walk by and miss quite a bit it's also true that understanding what the destination is making a point to really comprehend that doesn't mean you have to scrap what you're doing could simply lead to that light bulb moment you know so now you go oh uh you know there are additional ways i could arrive at that destination maybe i've been so focused on a particular element of the journey so tied to a particular vehicle that i've been limiting myself s right it expands your options in the book decisive by chip and dan heath they talk about how one of the biggest problems we have in decision making is unintentionally narrowing the scope that we have numerous additional avenues available to us but we don't see then because we become so fixated on a few choices i think of that point often you no challenging myself as to why i'm doing what i'm doing especially when activities are time intensive you know there needs to be a happy medium obviously if you challenge every single thing you do you'll be walking around in circles all day but the ability to the power to drill down the question what is it i'm really looking to obtain here is such a tremendous advantage if you can get a true handle on that and you're willing to expand your mind open your eyes think about about the big picture reduce the attachment to that dreaded phrase the way i've always done if you get to live in a world of endless options you see that your path is simply that one path of many in the business world you hear stories about people all the time that were unable to separate the goal from the medium couldn't look outside the parameters they'd created for themselves the blockbusters of the world you know when it should have been hold the vision but adjust the process and readjust over and over again our tendency is to hold on to that process so tightly that it becomes a weight around our ankles when it comes to relationships right people stay in toxic relationships all the time because that's the person this is the group i hang out with this is my network well what are you looking to get out of a relationship or group or network because no it certainly shouldn't be betrayal or chronic stress or limiting beliefs being imposed upon you so if that's the case detach and find a different way a different person or a different group again you're confusing the vehicle with the destination another example college right which for some people makes perfect sense for others it doesn't i loved in matthew mcc's book green lights when he realized he wanted to be an actor and to make his parents proud to do it was traditionally right he went to acting school until he realized his most valuable experience was everything he was doing outside of school but that the classroom was one vehicle of many to his ultimate destination was ultimately expendable he had that foresight someone once told me when i went to get my first car that the buyer is in control because they have the greatest strength a superpower the ability if it does not serve you to walk away to change course you can always do that's so when you feel stuck or stagnant try asking yourself is this a vehicle problem or a destination problem what is it that i want more than anything else and what is it this journey is bringing me that gets me there but gets me excited in the morning that inspires me to my core because i find that when you can detach the goal from the method it often exposes some valuable information that helps you re-establish momentum maybe it's taking resources from one place and adding it to another maybe it's a slightly adjusted approach maybe it's cutting a few small things away maybe it's a pivot maybe a total revamp who knows but the idea is it's never too late to, to get where you most want to go because when you identify the destination when you realize what the finish line is there are always numerous roads that lead you there we just have to make sure we don't get so caught up in a particular path or exhaust so much energy trying to jam that square peg into the round hole that we miss the infinite number of wide open doors waiting for us to notice their existence and walk embrace adversity through standing on that ledge staring out at what we know we need to do at the moment we least want to do it well that's where the future is shaped when procrastination feels feels like the answer or avoidance the optimal choice where does one draw their strength they say routine is a powerful tool in this fight and and i believe that when something becomes habit or part of the process instilled in the day to day there's just simply less room for negotiation we show up with our eyes on the prize but here's the thing we are human 
there's simply going to be days when the world pushes back life is a game of complexity it's unpredictable you want to talk about the good days fine it's easy to show up when we're feeling good and thankfully those days outnumber the others right creating the bulk of our consistency 10,000 hours but not all of them life is about momentum myself after coming off a pretty terrible weekend for a variety of reasons i found myself on that ledge again when the alternative route made itself known where it felt mighty tempting to call it off take a break where my worldview had come into question i had to ask myself who are you really it's easy to rational walking away in these moments in his book the war of art stephen pressfield says our job in life is not to shape ourselves into some ideal we imagine we ought to be but to find out who we already are and become it well who would have known how much goes into that process of becoming how committed we have to be to the road before us and not only when it's sunny but when the skies are dark and gray and how if we allow ourselves in those difficult moments to say sometimes it's okay to wave the white flag it's okay to walk away then you leave the door cracked to make that same decision at any other point in time right quitting conceding can very easily become a habit and a habit we want to avoid at all cost right i have this um little rule that no matter what i can never leave dishes in the sink overnight never and i treat this you know arbitrary little promise to myself like it's life or death which again random but hear me out it's it's half practical half symbolic i know that if i say okay just this once i've effectively removed the barrier separating order from chaos if it's okay just this once then it's okay 1000 times and a messy sink becomes a messy kitchen becomes a messy house becomes a cluttered mind extreme maybe but critical right here is where the symbolism comes and i understand how fragile that divide how when i'm tired or have a headache or i'm busy it's still priority because i want to hammer my subconscious with the understanding that i show up when it's inconvenient that very moment when you know i could easily trick myself into thinking it's small or dumb or arbitrary it's a sink who cares right that's the moment that i need to bleed into the rest of my life and i think that's exactly it right the flood waters are always always looking to come in and how many cracks until the room gives way you know when you've had a few rough days when you've lost something important to you when you're sad or disappointed about an outcome what then when life calls you to exceed expectations what then cause the world around you will always give you evidence to support dialing it back right selling yourself short if that's the case you're looking to make but here's the deal should you choose the inverse you are strong enough to be better than you've ever been in those challenging moments you can show up when it hurts you can re-establish your why and carry forward even after the turbulence of yesterday life will never be easy it will never all make sense and this understanding uh, has helped me to roll up my sleeves and continue forth when i'm disappointed with yesterday or overwhelmed by the conditions or landscape of the moment when i question how much i have left but i found that when i look hard enough there's always something to draw on and that's the message of note that's what we must show ourselves when you're on that ledge this can be where you're at your best this is where you get to uncover just how deep rooted your greatness is this is where you set the standard and the pace for everything to cool me crafting excellence there's something to the idea or act of stepping out of the limelight to work on yourself to quote unquote disappear for a particular period of time so that with a laser-like focus you're able to build and develop the skills that will make you great at what it is you want to do in a sense we're not created out in the world as much as we're created by what we do behind the scenes the thousands of hours spent dedicating ourselves to a craft right we enhance our value and capability by doing the often monotonous unglamorous things day in and day out and those results out in the world are merely a reflection of that work and that's what makes excelling in any given area so challenging there's something uh counterintuitive about performing to an audience of one dancing to no applause exhausting time and energy resources are so that you can cling to a promise but that's also why excellence will always be reserved for a few open to everyone but ultimately a few end up they're right the same way a finish line is open to everyone but ultimately reserved only for those willing to put in the hundreds if not thousands of practice miles to start the race run the race and complete the race that there's a substantial amount of sacrifice involved the outside world is, is its own chess game it requires courage and innovation and in a willingness to step into its great unknown but ideally in doing so one would be armed with other competency they've acquired when no one is looking it's a result of their own dedication and commitment and i actually started thinking about this uh, during a q a i did recently where someone asked if i had any thoughts on a how they could start a speaking career right i'm like sure happy to give my thoughts first and foremost to understand it's a long play so be willing to endure that bumpy road that journey there's no magic formula that makes you an mlk escort or overnight right you work forever to capture a a for a fragment of that excellent and someone a kind of chimed in give me a hard time you know we know we know eddie you hate marketing and i'm like marketing it took 
me a second to connect the dots how is this related um and the light bulb went off and I kind of laugh because I do bash marketing quite a bit and I think what they were getting to is I'm always talking about the long game right I'm always talking about working on yourself the back end the deep work chiseling yourself into something that's a unique authentically you extraordinary in its own right or being so good as the saying goes they can't ignore you uh but at the same time it would be pretty ridiculous uh and and stupid for me to say marketing is not important marketing is pivotal ingrained in some capacity in everything we touch you have to be able to effectively communicate why something is valuable obviously but i think there is a misconception and genuine misunderstanding in today's day and age with regard to adding value with regard to rising to the top of a niche or making an impact you know we see flashy posts and ads and videos and think oh, that's the target but that's just the mechanism for communication that's the bullhorn that's not the value add in cal newport's deep work he mentions how difficult it's becoming for us to break away from the social media and the push notifications and the emails and in solitude do the kind of work that really moves the needle that propels our greatness and makes us better at what it is we're looking to be great at we officially exist in a world of distraction where perhaps the greatest challenge now is how do we disconnect how do we turn off how do we slip into a state of deep work so that we can grow as people and then sure you market that competency once it's acquired but the goal is not to be a society screaming into a void trying to sell boxes of air we simply can't afford to leave substance behind value is ultimately what makes the world go round and it's created again outside of the limelight and look there's going to be some bias to my approach based on the path that I chose to take this has worked for me so I stand by it I advocate for it and in a surely there are some very talented people that disagree with me and that's great but I've always had the arrow pointed at what I want to do what I want all this to mean at 45 years old 55 years old and right now looking back it's all the hours I spent writing in solitude or giving speeches to a wall in a studio apartment recording and re-recording uh, adjusting my approach it's reps 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 that to me is what matters now that's what I'm most thankful for and some time has passed and as I transition into a new phase now sure I can get help and start blasting posts all over social media that's easy but the important thing is that I have a foundation to stand on the posts are not the product the craft is the product and I want everyone to at least whether they agree with me or not understand that distinction the million dull question the differentiator is what is your value add if you can ask yourself that right what is the one thing I want to be the best in the world at where is my north star and then spend every day at least sometime every day chipping away at that you'll be un stoppable but truly chipping away not feeling the need to share every detail with an audience or capture every second of what you're building behind the scenes now turn the cameras off breathe focus be private for at least a portion of your day i think you'll find in that space this beautiful opportunity to reflect and build and step into an evolved version of yourself don't be scared to disappear and come back better equipped don't be hesitant to go work on yourself if you're talking substantive impact true value Add it's always the people willing to put in the hours to do the things that most people are not willing to do target identify the areas that make the difference and then hammer those repeatedly and look I get it you have to in a lot of cases a give up some of the now in order to reach an ambitious goal in the future it's a trade-off it's hard but life is about trade-offs and maybe this message isn't for everyone but if you're listening to this and you want to achieve some semblance of excellence in a given area it's inescapable it means falling in love with a pursuit that's time intense it means showing up and putting in the hours often for little short-term validation it means solitude because getting better is more important than attention one of my favorite quotes is confidence is earned well you earn that confidence by showing up and committing to the things that truly matter that make you stronger sometimes we must step back to leap forward disappear as we are in order to reappear as we wish to be real work happens when no one is around you can you trust yourself enough to bet on that process believe in that road in that journey if yes you'll position yourself for opportunities and experiences that exceed your wildest embrace now imagination it's easy to look back and think about all the things you could have done differently especially since as we get older we get wiser right time provides this beautiful gift of clarity and ultimately we realize things like maybe a lot of our hesitation was unwarranted maybe a lot of our decisions uh, or indecision was fear-based and knowing that it's easy to look over your shoulder and feel like you could have lived a different life or taken a different path at the very least wish you'd done things differently but the reality is everything you've done has in fact taken you here to this moment and when you dwell on the past the should haves and the could haves you completely diminish the power of right now the current moment you completely underestimate the knowledge and the wisdom you've been collecting for years whose single job is to assist you in your next move it's a compounding of experience the good the bad and the ugly 
has landed you right here right now and how beautiful right here is the infinite blank page the forever fresh start and that's not to say the past doesn't matter it's to suggest that your prior discomfort your mistakes and lessons have equipped you to deviate from the routines and the cyclical nature of your past right the past is a gateway to now not a life sentence and there's a difference you say last year or last month or last week is valueless because you did x when you should have done y i say to that doing the wrong thing has positioned you to now do the right thing potential energy right like a spring being pulled back tighter and tighter and tighter awaiting its opportunity to propel forward you don't get that without those could haves and should haves they're integral to the process the reason you'll be different moving forward you know you can say i wish i'd taken more chances i wish i was bolder i wish i followed my hard two pieces of news for you one that's fantastic it seems as though you're now aware of those times you fell short and can therefore mitigate them moving forward and two you're not dead Yet we have to stop looking at yesterday like it's anything but a ladder to greater competency the gymnasium for your decision. Making anyone can cherry pick the past but the practical me asks what is. Beating yourself up about what's gone do for you what does it add to your life except for enabling and legitimizing the same identity you're looking to evolve and move on from see we don't limit ourselves. Because of right now it's always because of yesterday. Look what happened look what I lost look how things turned out and it's like take the data and trudge forward you now have the tools to move right into that darkness of night and in five years you'll look back and sure you'll wish you did things differently and same five years after that but that's why life is a journey and not a standardized test we are picking up the pieces as we go painting the masterpiece one brush stroke at a time and even though you might wish yesterday's brush stroke was a different color little darker different shade it's just as valid as all the others in contributing to the mural in its totality so sure be your greatest critic but be your greatest ally as well and that calls for being bold enough to let go of what's gone extract the value from yesterday and use it to build now something anything that's up to you but hear the message it's up to you now not who you were yesterday or what you did not how people saw you or how you used to live your life you have an opportunity now to go wherever your heart desires stronger and wiser at this point in time than you've ever been in your life so rather than dwell on what's gone how about asking how you can take those pieces of yourself and build again 1% daily transformation. What does it mean to be a little better every single day? James Clears noted that of each day you improve by only 1% you'll be a full 37 times better in a year that's an almost unfathomable number unbelievable transformation. Imagine being 37 times better at what it is you're looking to improve on 37 times. More efficient or skilled all because of a 1% per day. Commitment almost sounds too good to be true here's the catch though 1% doesn't. Seem like much which is good one might think you. Know that should make it easier well sort. Of the easier and more seemingly trivial something is to. Accomplish the easier it is to dismiss it as well we've all been there that and maybe. Not today maybe tomorrow no big deal we don't lose. Anything and that's what we must learn to wrestle with right Jim Rand puts it this way he says being successful is. Easy the issue is that being unsuccessful is easy. Two saying yes to the little things you know you need to do is. Easy but so is saying no putting your phone away to work on. Something of substance yeah that's pretty easy but watching just one more TikTok or Instagram or YouTube video that's easy too putting your shoes on going for a walk or run heading to the gym hey procedurally pretty easy not that complex but talking yourself into just going tomorrow instead also a rationalization that's pretty easy and that's essentially the question which easy are you going to go with how do you put yourself in position to select the right easy well like so many things it starts with the worldview and flows out to the tangible actions we take in support of that worldview for first things. First we have to know that the biggest advantage available is seeing the small things as so much more than small things it's refusing to fall victim to. The disappointment and burnout associated with hoping for one huge jump. A miracle solution the answer that will change everything that's deceiving winning look look small and consistent progress is boring it's mundane it looks like deciding on what matters and then making a pack with yourself every day to keep your own promises when most would fall off or push things to tomorrow it's seeing your commitment as everything knowing that the people who manufacture significance in their lives they treat what others would call silly and trivial as life and death they make the details into the whole storyline so yeah it might be easy for someone else to walk away but when you have given yourself no other option but to succeed the little steps to make it happen require zero thought or internal deliberation the person who gets into shape over the course of six months they're not going to be the one who found a secret diet bought a piece of equipment on amazon they didn't do the necessary thing here and there when they had their fleeting moments of inspiration no they made better consistent decisions no to the soda yes 
to the water no to the alarm yes to the run no to the Netflix and yes to the gym. Both options were easy in the moments in which they arose but each time only one. Option mattered and that's what it's about tying the prolonged gratification to. Something that means the world to you where each step is not just a step but one step closer to the moon so no it's certainly not that I can. Of coke or dessert or the day off will kill you but flip the narrative it's that when you do stay true to your mission and the promised prizes you make to yourself you get something so much. More back it's not oh what will I lose by skipping this. 1% no in a world where excellence compounds it's look what I am becoming. And this decision is an investment too good to pass up and every decision to move forward to embrace the things that align with your true north is an to that future. Choose your path. Self I made it part of my morning routine to go outside have a cup of coffee and listen to this app that gives you basically 15 minute summaries of books right kind of randomizes it for for me uh, and this morning the one that came on was called how to talk to anyone and there was a part that really stuck out to me I talked about being methodical uh, about who you interact with particularly in a social setting the idea being that uh, you don't need to be some type of polished politician to be able to navigate a party or work a room and it goes into you know planning the idea like eating before the gathering or parties so while you're there you can focus on connecting with the people you want to connect with uh getting the most out of your time there that type of thing makes sense but the line or or the way it was summed up that really got me was a uh, in that situation be the chooser not the choice pretty powerful framing there right think about how often when we don't ask ourselves what an ideal ending is what we want want and we simply show up and go with the flow we're actually forfeiting our ability to shape the outcome of the evening it's instead going to be shaped by the people who do have a preference and act accordingly in other words we're willingly signing up to be a part of their plan we're signing on to be the choice and not as the passage says the chooser like so many things you know you can take a single idea or concept from one area and appoint it at something else right it applies across the board how many places in our lives are we just going along without any visualized outcome or goal in what areas are we showing up to the metaphorical gathering with no ideal outcome in mind hoping the right people come to us the right things appear to us us and of course you know life is messy no pl going to be perfect but there's plenty of truth to that old saying you can't hit a target that you haven't created that isn't there and if you don't take the wheel in these little segments of your life you can't then be disappointed when things don't happen when the car doesn't go where you wanted it to go no the one holding the wheel will determine that now let's be real identifying what you want and pursuing it is definitely more challenging right it takes more effort and sacrifice it's emotionally taxing because now there's something at stake but you also position yourself to now get something worthwhile out of the situation a situation that you otherwise would have had very little control over right i've referenced to a few times my eighth grade teacher telling us never to hold our hands up to the sky uh, and he would clasp his hands together to make this little bowl and hold them out uh, but he'd say never just hold them out and hope something falls into them as the saying goes hope is not a strategy and i think there are different levels to this for sure it's one thing to never think about what you want in life at all it's another thing to walk into a party and snack on the pretzels instead of connecting with someone right they're very different but when we understand that underneath both of them underneath all of it the same principle applies we can at least recognize where they're happening in our lives some small some bigger and perhaps more important layers do a cake but why wouldn't it always be beneficial to ask yourself one what matters and two what can i do to bring me closer to what matters at least then you're cognizant i think often the greatest opportunities lost are lost simply because we're not aware of them right so if we make ourselves aware and we miss the opportunity let's make sure we missed it because we looked it in the eye and chose no we met met that additional layer of resistance and still said no thank you right there's intentionality to it i remember reading darren hardy's book the compound effect and he's someone that is apparently incredibly meticulous about everything he does uh to the point where he would write out a description for his future significant other like if it were a dream world the exact person he was hoping to spend the rest of his life with from her eye color hair would she enjoy doing all that stuff and you know it goes to show you the difference a few years can make the first time i read that i thought well that's way too extreme and i skipped right over it and now i look at that and i'm like yeah he's just creating an ideal so that in the real tangible world he can put himself in the best position to attract that person he's creating a goal otherwise what's the alternative you just kind of walk around and hope a you know someone appears around a corner someday who aligns with you and what you want in your interest and it's rolling dice there are just too many variables in life to constantly be wishing or crossing your fingers leaving things up to chance or fate there has to be some general sense of direction and i've had this kind of miniature epiphany uh, in many aspects of my life for example you know business i've been asked what do you want it to look like the next five years it used to be well five years is a
Long time away do I really need to know and it's like if you don't know. Then what are you doing today you just repeating what you've always done are you acting randomly and hoping it takes you somewhere that will make you happy down the road know you have a vision and as Bezos has said you hold. The vision you continually adjust the process again life is messy things will change 5 million times and that's okay but there's a better chance good things will happen to you if you identify what they are and seek them out even smaller example Boston my home. I live there I love the people there but you know 5 years ago I was at a point where my work was remote my team was remote so rather than simply endure a you know November to June every year I asked myself what's my ideal lifestyle. Like what if I design around that why not move somewhere that really excites me now I can run in the heat I and in January in Miami right that's not a small thing in my life that makes me a lot happier um and so it's it's little. Things like that you know you get the point from the big things to the the tiny details if you don't choose what you want or choose your path life will simply choose it for you and that may or may not you know be in line with what makes you happy or the idea as many of us have heard in a different way if you don't pursue your dreams you will undoubtedly spend your days working to help someone else build theirs without you taking control taking initiative life will and you will become a pawn on on the chessboard of life so ask the questions you know look in the mirror and delve into the aspirations of the person looking back at you from social events sure to your significant other to your work or business to your overall life goal what matters to you in these various arenas of your life what does success look like what does fulfillment feel like and once you have that blueprint in your mind you are now on the road to ensuring its construction the construction not of a world you were given but of a world you choose small steps big change it makes perfect sense in our busy lives that we sometimes lose sight of fundamental truths but at least from time to time that's part of being human and i want to talk about an important one the tendency to forget that parts make a whole sound simple sounds obvious not so much the pieces make a stack that little actions create big change and i can tell you that every time in my life i found myself in trouble or overwhelmed or intimidated it's because that very simple concept has eluded me you know and all i can see in the moment is how far i have to go all i can see is this big intimidating result and i'm not there and i want to tell a quick story to provide some context those of you who have seen my videos you probably guessed it it's running related um but if you're not a runner hang tight because this is not in any way specific to running um it's just a good way to articulate the message and you'll see that so the realization occurred a few days ago doing a distance run down a1a which is just a a long straight stretch them down the coast of florida it's perfect to kind of zone out and just just run uh and that's exactly what i must have been doing zoning out cuz as i'm you know pretty pretty far along i realized that they were kind of closing off the street there were people lining to the sidewalks there was some kind of organized event realized that I couldn't go back the same way that I came up so. Had to run up to the beach and it was one of those things where we we've all been there right the idea was great uh. Our body didn't necessarily like it um it just was one. Of those days it did did not feel good and I was really you know trudging my way forward and I noticed that every. Time I thought about the distance I needed to travel I felt worse you know that feeling when you're. Uncomfortable it's the thought of having to endure that for a long period of time. That's most taxing sure right now is uncomfortable but you know what creates. The anxiety is that it goes on for a long period of time we don't see an end. To the immediate we can't stop thinking about the space between where we are and where we have to be right so I'm. Continuing along and you know my mind sort of makes its way back to my. Freshman year in college and this is an important part in my life. Specifically because it's when I really learned what it meant to work. Hard I had no idea you know and I speak about this often because I went through high school I had good grades I was a decent athlete but I didn't understand what it meant to truly work you know my first month in college as part of the, the rowing team there was where I learned that just because you're suffering just because you're hurting doesn't mean you're entitled to anything someone else out there is suffering just as much the difference is they might be getting more out of it they're not feeling sorry for themselves and that mentality was eye opening for me it's not look at me I'm a hero for putting myself through this it's yeah it's uncomfortable she's also uncomfortable which one of you guys is going to turn that into results that's what defines winners and i remember you know the first workouts i did i remember doing jump squats and wall sits with my teammates and emphasizing ways to break down the x exercise into simple pieces mentally right little pieces that the mind was okay with that weren't so scary a two minute walls is pretty intimidating a 20 second walls that's not so bad so do six of those say something funny between each set find a Way to tear down a you you know the mental obstacles because the body can take so much if the mind lowers its defenses and simply allows it so anyway I'm making my my way forward up the coast and I stopped thinking about how far I had to go I just stopped I did not let it enter my brain my focus went very specifically to every two steps counting one two one two one two because anyone can do anything for two steps it's not 
Hard again it just so happens that they stack up and create miles but miles is. Not my concern right I'm not physically able to leap a mile no one can do that. What I'm capable of doing is taking steps that's all I can do and it's manageable and I can say without a doubt that that changed my experience it took the pressure off and if you don't feel like you're in control you will have a very tough time generating result. Because again no one can leap a mile and so a big part of success is rearranging the deck so that you have that control you're behind the wheel sometimes it's just reminding yourself that the little things create the big things the pieces stack up and every single thing in life can be broken down into those little pieces and guess what they're not scary when you take the cover off they're not overwhelming most importantly they're completely within your control right on a similar note a friend of mine recently asked the other day about youtube he's got a a follower a base of entrepreneurs right a lot of them are looking to take their business onto the platform uh, was asking me some questions and he asked you know what was the moment that sparked your channel's growth and it's a funny question because the the 100,000 subscriber mark was something that you know right from the get-go the onset that I, I was looking forward to i was aiming for but there was never that mile leap right there was no single video that changed the trajectory of my viewership or channel or business that's not how it happens it's a step-by-step -step process you can't jump to 100,000 or 500,000 or a million subscribers and starting out all I would think about is how far I had to go I had. Get all worked up and stressed out and you know disappointed but you learn lessons as. You go through things and I realize that you don't get x many subscribers in a day and if that's your focus of course you'll be overwhelmed cause you can't control that but what you can control is. Every thought every video every interaction with someone who cares about. Your message and if you stay true to that your consistency manifests itself in the form of a growing subscriber base you know and the point is it doesn't matter what you're doing right talk about running talk about youtube could be sports it could be relationships it could be anything yes you want to understand where you're going you want to know your target you want to lock in a direction then let go golds derail us because we forget what they're made of they're made of little vulnerable pieces to get to the top of a mount mountain you have to climb it rock by rock and when you're looking up from the base yes it's demoralizing might even seem impossible but no one can cover that distance it's about the steps to the top and then at some point so long as you decide not to turn around so long as you remain committed to overcoming each tiny obstacle each barrier you'll be at the top looking down at everything else everything below you why because you didn't see the stack you saw the pieces that were laid on top of each other